live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services, Intel, and their ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at AWS reInvent 2018 at the Sands Convention Center and all over Vegas. I don't know how many people are here. We haven't got the official word. 60,000, 70,000, I don't know. There's a lot of people. And we're excited to have our next guest, but before we get in, happy to be joined by Lauren Cooney. Lauren, great to see you as always. Great to see you as well. And uh, you know, one of my favorite things about doing CUBE interviews is we learn about new industries that we didn't even know about. So, while we're here talking about IT, it's really the application of IT that I think is really more interesting, more fun, and a great learning experience. So we're really excited to have our next guest on. He is Kevin Smith, the director of MIS for Transcore. Kevin, great to see you. Hello. And a many time CUBE alumni, Cezal Already, he is the CTO and co-founder of Datrium. Cezal, great to see you. Happy to be here. Yeah, so Kevin, before we get into it, tell us a little bit about Transcore. What are you guys all about? Basically, we are the uh, leading toll authority for kind of continent the United States, and we're trying to expand that throughout the world. Uh, we, we do the whole engineer all the way through manufacturing of toll systems for you know, vehicles and cars throughout the US. So the little stickers in your car all the way up to the readers that read them, they're coming through my place somehow or some other. So everything from the from the, the reader in the car and programming. Yeah, the thing. little sticker tag that sticks in your window Whatever or suction cups in, <laughs> wherever you are. Yes, you may hate us, but I'm not the one collecting well, the no, tools. Well, no, as long as you, I don't like it when you miss the picture. That's or it doesn't Well, no, 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 I mean, like, let's input some design here. No, there we go. <laughs> Trust me, I've tried. And then again, but then the huge back-end process to pull that up, get it into the systems, billing systems, yeah, integration we, to all kinds all, of All integrated, systems. yep. And how big is the company? How long has it been around? Um, whew. We were acquired by Roper. We've been many divisions, but it's Los Alamos was technically founding fathers 1954. Oh, 54, so you've been around a long time. Oh yeah, yes. They started with cows. RFIDs on cows? Yes, tracking cows in the pastures of New Mexico. <laughs> Put the little tags <laughs> in their ears, I imagine. All right, great. Well, we could talk about traffic probably all day long, but that's not what we're here. That's not your day job. You're not out there with no, the little uh, RFID scanners. Not anymore, like. thank God. Let's talk about some of the challenges, because you know, obviously the toll business has been around for a long time, but the automation of tools has really changed a lot over the last five years. You probably know better than me from somebody in a booth taking my money and giving me a receipt to some places it's almost exclusively electronic. So how's that business grown and what have been some of the accompanying challenges have you seen that thing grow? Part of, part of the performance issues we were running into was the quantity that we were having new because the man is gone from the booth. You know, we have to produce more tags that are become more readable, so that creates more back-end work, more transactions, and in the long run, producing more tags. You know, we've gone to millions and millions of tags being produced in a quarter to where it was just hundreds of thousands. So with that requires, you know, scalability that we can grow with our systems. And our current our systems we had just wasn't doing it. So you got the manufacturing of the tags as well. I didn't even think of the manufacturing. You got yep. to make them in the first place too. <laughs> that is that is our bread and butter, is man manufacturing those tags and the millions and millions of transactions that we test. Because we have to test every tag that goes out the door. Every tag gets tested. <laughs> How far away do they work on those readers? I'm just curious. Uh, depends on your speed. We've tested up to 200 miles an hour and I think it's like 40, 50 feet. So. As long as you're going under, you know, under 200 miles an hour, we can get you. Okay, so how did you, get, how did you meet Cezala and Datrium? How did that come about? We went looking for a product that could give us a one-stop solution. You know, we wanted something that was basically, I wanted to get out of the storage business, I wanted to get out of the management business, I didn't want to be having to worry about all, my, all these different vendors, all these different solutions, and Datrium was able to provide that, you know, compared to some of the other products that we were looking at. We did tests with other products, and Datrium came out on top saying, they gave us the total package. Right. So Cezal, when you looked at this opportunity, kind of what did you see, anything unique and different? You know, what were some of the, the challenges that you tried to figure out how to help Kevin? So what we're finding is that more and more companies, every company is a software company, every company is a data company, right? Everybody wants to move faster, everybody wants things faster. Like, I can't wait for my movie to start in two seconds. I'm like, why is it taking two seconds, right? So everybody like, wants things faster. We're living in this instant economy where everything needs to be, either you transform or you die. So, how do, we trans how do we make that transition into the speed? How do you build your data centers, whatever you're doing, to be match that speed of innovation? And any system you're going to deploy in a data center has to be not in the way. It has to be like less management, less overhead, just look at the Amazon, right? Very successful because there's less to manage and you mostly manage your application. That's what the business model is going to be going forward. That's why people like the cloud. 
Right. What right. is CIO like the cloud? Not because it's cooler or whatever, because it makes things faster. And it's expensive, yeah, but makes things faster in some ways. Right. So, go ahead. I was going to say, you know, one, one issue we ran into, we came to them with was our CAD designers. Because we designed the product. And the rendering was just dragging on our old systems. And we went from two to three minutes rendering to seconds, rendering new graphics. And so, before we're, they would hit, you know, they were like, I'm not going to save you, I'm not going to re-render it. Now they're re-rendering every time they're making a change, which helps them performance, helps the application, and increases the productivity of you know, my CAD designers. Right, I was going to say, there's probably the customer service pretty significant you know, as well, so yeah. they can get the version that they want. Definitely, definitely. And you know, the nice thing is, is Daytrium allowed us to scale. You know, we, weren't, we couldn't go out and just, okay, revamp everything. It's like, you got to do baby steps. Right, right. And, and Daytrium gave us that you know, scalability to where I could add anything from one to 128 nodes, you know, I, I was able to you know, increase performance by just adding a server node or increase you know, the rights by adding a data node. That's, that's the flexibility that I needed from, so, right. uh, from a vendor. So when you said the Daytrium had the whole package, you looked, at, you looked at some other solutions out there. When you were trying to define the whole package at the beginning of the process, what were the key attributes that you said, I, you know, I need, I'd love to get all these from one place? I was looking for performance and scale, which I got. I was looking for backup. You know, I wanted, God, I wanted to get out of the backup business. I was tired of tapes, I was tired of third-party solutions. Tired of tapes? <laughs> Trust me, yeah. <laughs> Don't tell the tape vendors here. I want to tell you know, Tape is good. If I, I right wanted that, you know. Security, I stay awake at night. You know, I, I lead our security teams, I stay awake worrying about, is my, is my data, you know, protected? You know, with their encryption, that, that you know, gave me that whole protection. And then the last thing was DR. DR is a, thorn in every IT manager, every IT director, every you know, CTO, and with their whole cloud shift, that DR, <laughs> what DR? It's done, you know? It's just, it just happens. Right. And, and those four things is kind of what led us to finding Daytrium, because some of them gave us you know, one or two, but not everyone can give us all four of the options that right. we were looking for. Well, what I love about the stories, those are, those are kind of concrete savings and, and you know, doing your job easier. But what you're excited about is enabling your CAD designer, you know, your kind of proactive sales process, your proactive design, your proactive innovation to actually move faster. That's not a cost saving mechanism. Uh, no. You know, that's, that's, that's really a transformational kind of positive revenue side of the, the tale that I don't think gets told enough, really. You know, people well, focus it. on the cost savings and execution. That's not what it's about. It's really about innovating and growing your business faster. Do you think? Oh no, our ROI, that we calculated in was just on hardware. Just on you know, my cost savings that I could put a penny to. The time, we, I can't, it's so great. I mean, my CAD designer is producing product faster. My developers are asking for more VMs you know, for me to spin up because the speed is so much faster. Where it used to be like, oh, don't touch it. I got this guy tuned exactly where I want it. We got the memory, I'm like, nah, but now, they're asking for more and more, and it's my end users who are really the engineers, my manufacturing people. You know, they're wanting more and more out of the product. You know, and Daytrium's delivering. I don't. I mean, I don't go to a dashboard and look and try to figure out how to tweak it anymore because it's like I don't have any complaints. And if I don't have any complaints, we're doing something That's right. A good thing. So it just works. Oh, it just, it was beyond just Literally. works. Trust me, I was ready when we bought the product to bring in a whole team, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to hire all these people. And the guy came in, he goes, okay, turn it on. Okay, we're done. I was like, no. -uh. He goes, oh yeah, you got to plug that cord in back there. And I was like, wow. You know, because usually it's. I'm looking at a number right now, and that is 617% three-year ROI. It's it's across many customers. We cannot I didn't see went and talked to I a totally lot of customers. I totally believe you with what you so know. So we are aiming for like our UX designer came and asked me one day, what should I aim for as a design principle? I said we should aim for zero UI. Yes. That's what we should do. Is like it should be transparent, it should just work. That's what we really aim for. I'm not I'm not saying we have zero UI today, but that's yeah, our goal. Good like. to have lofty goals. Huh? Yeah. Just like just don't just not let's just make it work automatically, right? That's kind of the goal. Well, and that was one thing. We wanted something integrated, so we didn't have to go looking. And that's one thing I, you know, I tell, I tell you know, the, the engineers all the time, I'm like, I go into the UI just to kind of see how cool the system's running. You know, because there is no issues. You know, it just works. I, everything's integrated. I don't have to go in and click and click and click and click to get through stuff. It just works. It integrates well. You know, we're a big VMware shop. We're a big Dell server shop. All of that, one-stop shop. You know, I was telling, I was telling, this is all, you know, it's great when I get the email that there's a problem with my, you know, Daytrium system before my help desk is getting the, the notification. I, I can't buy that service, right, right. you know. 
So, Kevin, there's a lot of peers that'll be watching this show, uh, peers of you. You know, having kind of gone through this, this process, now you're kind of on the other side and you're, you're on to some new things in terms of innovation. What would you share with a peer who's trying to sort some of this out? I mean, it's a confusing landscape, there's so many options, and, and you got to do your day job too, <laughs> besides putting a new technology. What, what would you share with a peer you're sitting down over a, over a, a beverage on a Friday afternoon? You know, I would talk to them about, you know, having that capability really a performance scale, you know, being able to, not worrying about controllers, not worrying about what SSDs you got to put into something to make it work. Pop them in, They're, you know, SSDs are cheap nowadays. You know, pop them in, it increases, you know, your, your reads. You know, going back to the, the whole, no more third party solutions for backups. I mean, every sysadmin, every manager knows, backups are only good for restores. That's the only reason you do a backup is because you got to do that restore. And it, it becomes invisible. It's all running in the background. I, I don't even think about it anymore. Right. You know, my old systems, we still think about. You know, that aren't on the Daytrim product yet. You know, but all our production, you know, when I'm backing up every hour, and I, you know, my RTO be almost becomes zero if something happens, you can't ask for that. And that's critical, I think, for every manager, every director, even the sysadmins. No one wants to really think about backups. And, and when you're looking at other, you know, when you're comparing your products, take a look at that. You know, how quick can you get something back up when that hard drive went out? Right, you know? right. That's, that's critical. And of course, DR is, you know, everyone needs that checkbox checked, you know, for disaster recovery, and it, it just comes right away okay. with that. So, run out of time, I got to ask you the big question. Do you sleep better? Oh, much better, <laughs> easily now. <laughs> yes, now I get to worry about other things, like keeping my CFO happy about something else, <laughs> not this. And I've got, I've got a list of people we need to introduce yes. to you, definitely. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, you always move to your next point of failure once you fix one exactly. product. Exactly. Watch Lucy, uh, you know, check out the chocolate. The chocolate. Hey, but if I can have this line. one off my plate, that's one better All for right. me. Well, Kevin, thanks a lot for uh, for telling your story. It's a really impressive story, and I'll think of you as I go across a Dumbarton Bridge uh, sometime. <laughs> think about that, <laughs> yes. Next week, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's all great to see. See you as always. Great. Lauren, lots of fun. I'm Jeff Frick, you're watching theCUBE. We're at AWS reInvent 2018. Thanks for watching.